I'm Rachel Hernandez, real estate investor turned mobile home investor and best-selling author. I make a living investing in mobile homes for cash flow for long-term passive income. After many mistakes and lessons learned, I've been able to create the kind of life where I can do the types of things I want to do, not have to do. I created the Adventures in Mobile Homes podcast to share with you what I've learned so you can spend more time with family, friends, and do things you love. Mobile home investing can help you get there. If you want to hear real stories with practical and actionable advice you can use from someone who's been in the trenches and who's still investing today to create the type of life you love, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Well, hey there, and welcome to the Adventures in Mobile Homes podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Hernandez, aka Mobile Home Girl of adventuresinmobilehomes.com. Thank you so much for joining me here on the eighth episode of the podcast. Now, just in case you missed it, be sure to tune in to the last episode where I talk about the different types of mobile home parks and how to tell the differences between them to help you choose which parks to work with as a mobile home investor. You can find it along with the show notes at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash seven. And that is the number seven. Okay, so let's get started. So last week, as part of the Take Action series of episodes on what you can do to take action as a mobile home investor, I shared with you about the different types of mobile home parks and the steps you can take while you're out in the field visiting these parks to tell the differences between them to help you choose parks to work with, which will set you apart from the competition. But if you're going to be buying mobile homes in parks, like I do, you need to know how to approach park managers and how to talk to them in the first place. Why? Because it's not enough to just go out there and start talking to mobile home owners with homes for sale. It's not enough to start calling on for sale by owner signs in the parks you want to do business in. No matter what you do, no matter if you put together the deal of a lifetime, you can't do business in a park until you get the okay from the park manager or the owner to work there. So if you don't know the skill of approaching and talking with park managers or owners, you will not succeed as a mobile home investor buying homes in parks. But if you do, you will set yourself up for success and be one step ahead of the competition. So today, I'm going to talk about what you, as a mobile home investor, can do to take action and how you can approach park managers in the parks you want to do business in and talk to them in order to build rapport and create long-lasting relationships for the long-term for your mobile home investing business. But before we move on, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hey there, Rachel here. Are you ready to take action with your mobile home investing plans? Are you tired of waiting on the sidelines? Have you been trying to make things happen as a mobile home investor, but you're not getting the results you want? Do you need the guidance 
of an experienced mobile home investor like me? If yes, then I've got a mobile home investing course for you. It's called What You Need to Do to Get Started in Mobile Home Investing. It takes you from point A to point B on the steps you need to do to take action as a mobile home investor and get you the results you want. With so much information out there, it's overwhelming to go out, search, and come up with a plan for taking action on what you need to do to get started as a mobile home investor. In addition to the course, it includes a 50-page workbook where you can follow along and take notes, a free audiobook where I talk about getting started as a mobile home investor, and the mistakes you need to avoid. Plus, you'll get access to a private forum where you can ask me questions directly, post your deals, and get opinions on them, and network with others who have taken the course. This is the only forum I go to personally answer questions from students. I have a special limited time offer for you as a listener of this podcast. So if you're ready to take action and need someone to help you with your mobile home investing plans, check it out at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash take action training. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash take action training. Grab your seat and get started today. Now, back to the show. Okay, so once you've visited a few mobile home parks and have chosen which parks to work with, based on your personality, then what's the next step? Should you start calling on for sale by owner signs in parks? Should you start meeting with owners of mobile homes for sale? Or better yet, should you start putting deals together and getting deals under contract? The answer is no. Not until you've talked with the park manager or the owner of the park. Why? Because before you can even start doing business in mobile home parks, as I do, you have to get the okay from the park manager or the owner for every park you want to do business in. Remember episode two of this podcast where I talk about my mobile home investing journey? Here, I did all the wrong things. I talked, met, and even put a deal together with the seller of a mobile home in a park where... I did not get the okay to work there from the park manager first. I did things the other way around. I found the deal first in the park instead of talking to the park manager to create a relationship and build rapport so I could eventually do business in the park. Instead, what ended up happening was that after I put the deal together with the sellers, only did I talk and visit with the park manager after the fact. But the park manager didn't want me there. 
Each time I went into the office, it was always the same answer. No, you cannot work in the park. If you want to buy the home, then you have to live in the home yourself. But for some reason, I thought I could change the park manager's mind. I thought I had the deal of a lifetime. Only to find out I couldn't even work in the park in the first place. So when you're just starting out, it's very important to take the time to build rapport and create relationships with park managers of the parks you decide to work with. Now, I'm going to be honest. This is easier said than done. And it's more of an art than an exact science. It's better that you learn to do this earlier in your mobile home investing career rather than later. Now, most real estate investors just starting out, they do it the wrong way. Just as I had when I started out. They talk to mobile home sellers first, and then they try to convince the park manager to give them the okay to work there. Sure, it could work, possibly, but what are the chances? If you actually took the time to build a relationship and build rapport with the park manager or the owner in the first place, then you'll be in a much better position to go forward with deals you find since you have the okay from the park manager beforehand compared to those investors who don't. So do it right the first time. Are you ready to learn more? Okay, so how exactly do you approach park managers in the first place? Well, the first thing you want to do is have an idea of what you want to say and have a way for park managers to contact you if they'd want to stay in touch. A simple business card with your name, phone number, and email address is fine. You can even put on the card that you buy, sell, or rent mobile homes. It's really up to you, however you want to do it. But I will say, don't be too professional. It's a complete turnoff to park managers, in my opinion. So what do I mean by this? Well, there are two school of thoughts on this issue. The first is that you should be completely professional when approaching park managers or owners. And that is to tell them you're an investor with money and that you buy, sell, or rent these mobile homes all the time, even if you don't. Here, you're establishing your authority and you hope the park manager will be willing to work with you after telling them that. Unfortunately, this doesn't always work. It depends on the manager and their personality and how you look and present yourself 
as a person. And it may work with parks that are desperate to fill their lots or need help from other investors financially. But how about those parks that are doing just fine? Those that really don't need the help from other investors because their lots are full. Or when they do have lots available, there's so much demand that the spaces get taken up right away. Well, here, there is no motivation to work with quote-unquote investors in the first place. Here, in their minds, they're doing just fine. And they may be weary of meeting investors when it comes to doing business in their park. So personally, I take the second approach. Here, I approach park managers as a regular person. I don't tell them I'm an investor as soon as I walk through the door. I don't talk fast. I don't try to be slick. And I don't try to make it seem like I have many years of experience in this business and lots of money. Because honestly, this tactic does not work for me. And it didn't work for Lonnie Scruggs, the godfather of mobile home investing, either. As one of Lonnie's students, I learned to be humble and treat people like people. And that includes park managers and owners in these parks. So what exactly should you say to try to build rapport with park managers in the first place? Well, I just basically go in there, say hello, smile, and tell them I was just passing through the park and I'm just there to get information about the park. And then I shut my mouth. I don't say anything. And I let them talk. And many times they do. They tell me exactly what I need to know about the park. How much is the lot rent? Their rules and regulations. Application fees. What lots are vacant? What homes are for sale? What homes are for rent? Etc. Etc. Now, while they're talking, I've got my notebook and pen in hand, taking notes as they talk. You want to jot everything down. Like you're going to live in the park yourself. Because this is the type of information you need. Not only as a homeowner, but also as an investor. But remember, when you talk to park managers, it needs to be a two-way street. Don't just look down at your notebook and take notes. You need to maintain eye contact with the park manager as they talk so they know that you're listening and staying engaged. No one wants to talk to a statue. Now, as they talk, ask questions. 
and make your conversation a two-way street. As a side note, I have a whole chapter dedicated to working with park managers in my book, Adventures in Mobile Homes, How I Got Started in Mobile Home Investing, and How You Can Too. If you'd like to read more, which I'll link up here in the show notes. So once you get the information about the park from the park manager or owner and have taken your notes, then what? How exactly do you go about telling them what you do? Now, here's the tricky part. You want to tell them you're an investor in a way that sounds like you're not an investor and be non-threatening. I know this sounds weird and completely the opposite of what you may have learned, but I'm going to tell you, it works. So here's what I say. I thank the park manager for the information and for taking the time to speak with me. After they've gone over their spiel about the park and anything else they need to talk about, the park for the information I'm there for. This is an important step and shouldn't be overlooked. Let them talk and don't cut them off. Otherwise, you'll make a bad impression. Remember the saying, you only get one chance to make a good impression? So make it a good one the first time. When it comes time for me to talk, I basically tell them that I help people buy homes or help good people into homes if I plan to rent them out in this business. I go on to say that I buy the homes and me and my husband fix them up. Then I work with the parks to find good residents for these parks, which is the reason why I'm there, to find out information such as the lot rent and the rules and regulations of the park. This is a very important step. You want to make it look like you're a small-time investor. Sort of like a mom-and-pop type operation. Why? Because people respect mom-and-pop even park managers and owners. Don't make it sound like you've got a whole crew of people that you work with, even if you do. For me, I can say this now because I'm established, and it's a completely different approach for me now because of my experience. But when you're just starting out, you have to do what works. And positioning yourself as a mom and pop type operation works the majority of the time. So after you tell the park manager or owner exactly what you do, then you'll have to wait for their reaction. And this is the scary part. Yes, going into the park office is pretty scary, especially on the first visit. But once you start talking, and remember, you let the park manager do most of the talking in the first place after you ask them for information about the park, you'll soon get over that. 
though the scary part is waiting for the park manager's or owner's reaction after you tell them what you do. Either they'll say, yes, we can work with you, and then you offer to stay in touch. Now, be sure to have your business card ready. Or they say, no, we don't want to work with you, and they'll give you a reason, as I did, and was rejected in the story of the second episode of this podcast regarding my mobile home investing journey. And you'll move on to the next park. But you know what? This is all part of this business. And if you keep at it, you'll eventually get a park manager or an owner willing to work with you. You just have to be persistent. Now, let me tell you a story about how I was rejected from a mobile home park. This was when I was just starting out. It was a large mobile home park with a lot of lots. It had a lot of amenities, such as a clubhouse and pool. And it was a high-end park. Now, just in case you don't know the differences between the different types of parks, be sure to check out Episode 7 of this podcast, which I'll link in the show notes. Getting back to the story, I went into the park office, introduced myself, and talked with the park manager. I used the same approach I just described, which still works today. I didn't go in saying I was an investor, and I just tried to get information about the park. Well, I could immediately tell by the park manager's body language that she didn't like me. And not everyone will. Remember, real estate is a people business. We're all different. And we don't all have the same personality. So she told me I really couldn't work in the park. Of course, I thanked her for her time and left. And that was that. Fast forward a few years go by, and I go in the same park office again. And guess what? There's a different park manager. Now, this one was nicer. She was older and very organized. But again, she told me I simply couldn't work in that park. She went on to tell me that they were already working with a few other investors on different projects. So again, I thanked her for her time and left. Over the years, I kept going back to that same park. Over and over and over again. But each time, it was still the same response. No, I couldn't work there as they were working with other people. So, a few more years go by. And guess what? The park manager retires. And now there's a new park manager working there. Now, this one, she knows me personally. 
because she used to manage the sister park, which, by the way, this is a corporate-owned park with many parks in the area and across the country. And guess what? She says, I can definitely work there all I want. Now, here's where the story gets interesting. For her own reasons, the park manager of this park decides to take another job elsewhere. And guess who becomes the new park manager? Her assistant. And her assistant remembered me because I got her a gift for Christmas, which, by the way, I do for all the park managers and owners I work with, including their assistants and the maintenance staff. So she remembered me and liked me because of that. And I'm sure because I treated her like a person. Now, some investors really talk down to the assistants or maintenance staff. And I really don't recommend this. Because you never know what will happen in the future especially when it comes to building relationships. So now I'm in this park. The assistant of the prior manager is now the manager of this park. And she tells me I can do all the deals I want in the park. And guess what? This park has a thousand lots. Enough business to keep me busy for a long time. So the moral of the story is to be persistent and treat people like people. Because you never know where your actions will take you in the future. So there you have it. My advice on how you can approach park managers with the parks you decide to work with and the steps you can take to talk to them and build rapport and create relationships with them as a mobile home investor just starting out. So what did you think? Did this episode help you in getting started as a mobile home investor? I hope so. As you can see, it's very important to take the time to talk to park managers or owners of the parks you want to do business in the first place. You cannot do business in a park without the okay or approval of the park manager or the owner. So take the step first before you start talking to and meeting with mobile home sellers. Don't do it the other way around. Otherwise, you'll set yourself up for failure. Now, I will say building rapport and building relationships with park managers or owners is more of an art than an exact science. You may not hit it off on the first meeting. It may take a few meetings for them to warm up to you. Though, if you talk to a park manager who's willing to work with you, be sure to stay in touch. Give them your business card and follow up regularly in person. 
not on the phone, not via email, but in person. Now, regarding email, I do suggest you send them a thank you for meeting me email after you visit them. Don't do it on the same day. Usually, I wait a day or two to send it. This is a way for them to keep in touch with you and keep you in their minds. Because let's face it, mobile home park managers and owners have a lot on their plate. If you can make things easier for them by doing all of the follow-up and the hard work, they'll be appreciative of that and will want to work with you even more. This is all part of the business and shouldn't be overlooked. I hope this episode has helped. Approaching park managers and talking with them in the parks you decide to do business in is one action step you can take to help you get closer to your goals as a mobile home investor. An important action step and one not to be taken lightly. And speaking of action, if you yourself are ready to take action and feel that you need some guidance as a mobile home investor, then I have a special training course for you. It's called What You Need to Do to Get Started in Mobile Home Investing. Basically, the course will take you from point A to point B on the steps you need to take to take action when just getting started as a mobile home investor. It's a completely self-paced training course that you can do on your own time. And in addition to the course, it includes a 50-page workbook where you can follow along and take notes, a free audiobook where I talk about getting started as a mobile home investor and the mistakes you need to avoid. Plus, you'll get access to a private forum where you can ask me questions directly, post your deals, and network with others who have taken the course. This is the only forum I go to personally answer questions from students. Now, I have a special offer here for listeners of this podcast episode for a limited time only. You can check it out at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash take action training. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash take action training. Hope this helps. And if you decide to take the course, I'll see you in the forums. Continuing along on the theme of taking action, I'll continue to talk about the different action steps you can take to start building up your business as a mobile home investor in the next couple of episodes. So stay tuned. For more information on this episode, check out the show notes where I link up some of the resources mentioned here. You can find it at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash eight. And that is the number eight. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash eight. And if you enjoyed this episode, 
please be sure to share it with family and friends. And be sure to subscribe. And if you have some time, I'd love to hear your feedback through a short Apple podcast review. Until next time, this is Rachel Hernandez, a.k.a. Mobile Home Girl of the Adventures of Mobile Homes podcast, signing off. Thanks for listening.